Living on Lake Superior is a beautiful experience, but lakeside living comes with challenges. With high water levels and frequent coastal storms, coastal property owners are dealing with more direct impacts from the lake itself. Here in Minnesota's North Shore, we're looking at how some residents are using nature-based means to adapt to changing conditions and protect their shoreline property. Um, but we're really close to the lake, right? And so we get all of the lake's um, different, you know, temperaments from calm days to really stormy days. Um, we've been seeing more and more like storms that um, uh, start to eat away at the, the shoreline, you know, um, especially in the fall and, and early winter. Grand Marais, Minnesota sits on the western Lake Superior coast where Artist Point divides the coastline into Grand Marais Harbor and East Bay. Two East Bay sites demonstrate how unique nature-based approaches that include native plant and shoreline buffers can protect against waves and erosion damage. East Bay Suites and the Best Western Superior Inn offer two examples of approaches that other property owners can consider. And so we were looking at the portion of the shoreline that was still um, soft in our mind. It was that area that um, we just we were looking for solutions on how to um, strengthen that area and really you know, preserve whatever lakeshore we could. One of the considerations was, you know, maintaining um, lake view and trying to be as natural and native to the area as we could be. Both site owners work directly with contractors experienced with using native plants for shoreline restoration. East Bay Suites also built a really strong working relationship with the Cook County Soil and Water Conservation District. We just put a lot of trust in the people that we were working with. You know, we had such a close partnership with Cook County on it. Nature-based shorelines, also called living or hybrid shorelines, are newer in the Great Lakes, but have been widely used in marine coastal areas. The Best Western Superior Inn site uses large rocks as a physical barrier between the lake and the property, with a constructed berm and native grasses behind. East Bay Suite site uses a more diverse group of shrubs, trees, and flowering plants to form a shoreline buffer. We knew that our project was a little different but as a community, um, including myself, that we were a little skeptical about how something that might work on a smaller body of water how that could work on Lake Superior. So we've been surprised at the resiliency of it. Planning a nature-based shoreline protection project continues after project design and installation. To be successful, these projects require long-term maintenance over many years while plants establish and grow. Maintenance may include watering, weeding, and extensive debris removal. Somebody going into it just needs to be aware, especially if they're in a in a climate as extreme as Lake Superior can be, um, that there can be you know subsequent years of just maintenance and still um, you know tending to it. Last year when we had our big storm, they the beach gravel piled all the way in, so you couldn't even see the rocks anymore. It was level to the top of the rocks after the storm was over. The the beach gravel did end up going over top of the berm and that we had to remove in the spring. With these, like, you know, early winter storms, they end up throwing a lot of, like, rock and gravel onto the plantings. So we had some larger natural boulders, like, moved into the space as a buffer. Because those boulders really help block a lot of that sediment. Um, but in the early spring, after all the snow and ice melt, uh, there's always a lot of sand and small rock that gets pushed up over from the winter storms um, that takes some clearing out. Um, we typically do that over the course of a week or two, you know, a couple hours a day with uh, either leaf blowers and just blow the debris back towards the lakeside or brooms and sweeping it up. Um, it's just a, a small process of carefully removing it without damaging the plants. The unexpected maintenance of having to remove all of this beach gravel after each storm <laughs> required much more labor hours than expected and probably is what would be expected for most Lake Superior shorelines if they are so close to the a, a beachy area rather than like a, a bedrock area. 
If you're interested in pursuing any method of shoreline stabilization, nature-based or otherwise, it's important to reach out to experts and get advice specific to your property. I would say the resources like the any of the soil and water resources in the county would be somebody that they for sure would want to reach out to just for recommendations. I think that would probably be the biggest thing is just like, you know, getting connected with people that really understand projects of that scope. As much as the conservation district sells these projects, there's also really good um, native landscaping contractors that are out here advocating for natural shoreline buffers as well. And so when you first start planning for a project, it can feel overwhelming, but I would encourage anybody to start small. You might realize how easy it is and you can expand on it later. Looking at the Natural Resources Conservation Service guidelines for critical area planting, that gives some more specific guidelines for planting projects and native shoreline restorations for species selection using the DNR's native plant communities. They specifically have ones for Lake Superior that can give you an idea for species selections and what you might actually find native and growing in this type of area. The big thing is making sure it's going to be put in so it's going to be stable. I mean, when you got Lake Superior, I mean, it's not a lake, it's an ocean. And so you have to factor that in. You know, so if you do something, you want to keep it at the edge of your property, right where it becomes an erosion problem or, um, you know, where the waves aren't really hitting it so hard. They're just kind of rolling into that area. Um, I guess that would be my advice. These projects exemplify that natural-based shoreline protection methods can work to make coastal Minnesota more resilient to high water levels and wave impacts. To our surprise, it's been very resilient. When you go up there in like April after the snow melts, or sometimes May after the snow melts, you would think it's like there's no way this is going to come back. But every year it, it comes through. We're looking forward to just seeing it grow and um, evolve and and our hope is that it's a permanent piece of the lakeshore now. It's, it's really our hope that this can be self-sustaining and that we won't have to take those more hard solutions. At this point, it's doing a great job and it looks great. Another big lesson learned is that I'm just continually reminded of the force of nature, both in the power of Lake Superior and its abilities to just change that shoreline environment, but also the ability of native plants to bounce back. They're truly resilient.